Good morning and welcome to worship before Grace and Bethel United Methodist Churches. And we are so glad that you were able to join us today. We have had to move inside this morning because of the remnants of Delta, which has given us some rain today. So uh, we are glad that you were able to join us. A couple of notes. One, um, the children's ministry team at Bethel was planning to have a drive-through trunk or treat on Halloween. Uh, there will be more information coming in, coming out about it uh, later on in the week. Also, we want to, and since I have some accompanists this morning, we want to wish everyone celebrating an October birthday uh, a happy birthday. For me, this is a, a two for month because my mom's birthday is October the 4th and I got to celebrate the middle son's birthday yesterday. So all of you that are uh, celebrating uh, a birthday in the month of October, Miss Luna, can you give me a key to Miss Sandy? We'll, Miss Angie. Oh 
this morning for our morning prayer. There will be a part where I will pause. And wherever you are joining us or seeing us this morning, um, say the names or share the names out loud. And then please feel free to email me those names um, this week. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, your faithful community has gathered this day, and we desire your healing mercies in our lives and in the lives of friends and family, those who are lost, alienated, alone, who are suffering from illnesses, who mourn, who feel hopelessness in their hearts this day. We bring now these names of these dear ones as we pray this morning. Let us lift up the names of those who are suffering from forms of pain and alienation. Pray for those that have been impacted by Delta, particularly those in the Louisiana area that have had a sort of back-to-back -back hit from the hurricanes this season. Lord, in your never-ending mercy, hear our prayers. We also gather as a community in, in support of each other. And we come to celebrate the wondrous events in our lives and in the lives of families, of family and friends. Let us lift up this morning names of those who rejoice in the many blessings that you have brought to them. your great goodness, hear our prayers of joy. For all these things, both sorrowful and joyful, we rejoice that God continues to be with us. Let us resolve to focus our lives on God's loving and healing presence and become bearers of God's good news through our words and our actions of love and mercy. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture for this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. And I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Be glad in the Lord always. Again, I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God in your prayers and petition, along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, brothers and sisters, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things, all that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things, whatever you've learned, received, heard, or saw in us, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Putting together today's sermon, and it's a little funny, I'm going to be talking about Facebook. Well, you have a preacher who does a Facebook 
So I had to do as much looking up on Facebook as I did to get ready, almost to get ready for the sermon. I think, though, that there's a couple of things from Facebook that we can learn um, about our faith and about other things, about connection. You know, Facebook was created to help us connect with friends and to, to share things that were going on in our lives. To get into your Facebook account, of course, you have to put in your email address and a password. and You have to do this each time you want to go and log in. However, if you look under there, there's this little box you can click. And if you click on it, you don't have to keep re-entering your information every time you want to log in. Because when you check the box, it remembers your email and it remembers your password. And then it allows you to go directly into your account. The little box is that keep me logged in. Now, I will caution you, if you were on an open or public computer, do not check, check the box, because if you do, whoever logs onto the computer next will be able to go into your account and see all your stuff. But if it's on your home computer, it would be pretty neat because you don't have to remember another password to be able to log in so you can see your information. And I did find that if you click the box, it does doesn't necessarily mean that you are on Facebook 24-7, even though it, what it gives the indication to people around you. But it does give you an easy way to get into and see your account. But I believe that staying logged in and staying connected to God is an essential part of our faith. The worst times in my life were the times that I felt the most disconnected, distance from God and distance from my faith. And if we can discover a way that we can remain connected, we can remain logged in to God and our faith, then we can live the life that God wants us to live. So how do we stay connected with God? Of course, one way would be reading the Bible on a regular basis, because this helps us to connect to, to God through His Word. The Scriptures should be there to, to challenge us, to, to convict us, and to encourage us. We can also connect to God through small groups, meeting together with other Christians to, to share, to discuss our faith, and to help hold each other accountable and then to recognize and to feel God's presence with around or within and around that group. We can also remain connected with God through worship, whether it's private worship, worship in church. Worship is what makes us aware of God's presence in our lives. We still need to find that way that, that we can keep logged in, that we can stay connected. Well, I offer you this from a, an author, a gentleman that I am currently reading his book, The Gospel According to Starbucks. And his name is Leonard Sweet. Sweet, I'm sorry. But he shares a chant. It's a phrase that he speaks several times a day to, to help keep that connection with God. And it comes from the verses that we read earlier this morning. After I read the, the scripture and then listened to his chant, I, I searched through the Bible and, and found that Paul shares this idea of, that has come out from these verses and several different other passages. One was Romans 12, 12, where it says, don't quit in hard times, pray harder. 
1 Thessalonians 5 says, Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you to belong to Christ Jesus to live. Now, this is by no means a complete list, but because there are several other times in Scripture that Paul says the, the similar things in a similar way. So, we could memorize the verses that we read this morning, or we could memorize seven words. Seven words that provide the meaning to the verses that we read, and that will help us stay logged into, connected to, the Spirit of God. And here are the seven words. Anxious, nothing. Prayerful, everything. Thankful, anything. Peace. Now, say them again with me, wherever you are. Anxious, nothing. Prayerful, everything. Thankful, anything. Peace. When we say peace, you have to believe in the word. Because it's the peace that, that comes from these words that, that that's that connection for us with God. It's God's peace that remains with us and it, and it helps keep us logged in. So let's look at each, each of those little sections, each of those words. Anxious, nothing. This reminds us that we don't have to be anxious or, or worry about anything. Worry or fear does not need to overwhelm us. Now some of you may be saying, Preacher, that has things you said and done. And that's true. But it's a goal. It's a goal that can lead us. We're not going to be able to do all these things flawlessly. So we don't need to feel bad if, if one phrase is more difficult for us to do than the other. But for most of us, it should be a challenge. And in challenging us, it should encourage us. Jesus tells us to be anxious over nothing. Because he's asking us, how, how does worrying fix anything? When you worry about things, does it make your problem go away? If we can be mindful to allow nothing to make us anxious or to make us worry, then God's peace remains connected in our lives. You know, maybe I, I'm not the best one to talk about not being anxious or, or worrying because most of the time being anxious or worrying isn't a problem for me. And maybe because I'm sort of a problem solver, so I like looking for solutions to problems. So when a problem occurs that may cause us to worry or others to worry, I sort of get excited about it because it gives me an opportunity to try and fix it. So don't get tied up on worry and fret. Worry can drive you crazy. But you can solve the problem if you remember to stay connected. And if you do worry, try to, to let that worry go. Find a way to, to work through it, to work out a release. Maybe you need to go to prayer more quickly. Maybe you need to find someone who's a good listener that, that you can talk to and you can throw out your concerns. Or maybe you can.
can highlight various verses in the Bible, scripture that can that can support you and give you that encouragement and, and help you to worry less. Just because you worry doesn't mean that you lack faith. doesn't mean that if you had more faith, all anxiety would leave your life. However, I do think if we discipline ourselves with a, a remedy or a method that, that will work for us, we can let go of that anxiety. We can let it be, let it be released. So try and remember, anxious Nothing. The next part, prayerful. Prayerful everything. Folks, we need to pray about everything. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is life-changing. Prayer can transform our lives. You know, you, if you think back, if, is there anything more exciting than, than looking at your a baby that's laying in his crib all wrapped up and covered up and then all of a sudden you see they're crawling then they're at that cruiser stage and then finally they're walkers babies seem determined that they want to get up on their feet and no matter, no matter how many times they topple or tumble over, they seem to get back up. Babies in that cruiser stage want to want to get a hold of things and pull up, and then all of a sudden, what do they want to do? They want to let go. Of it. Standing upright and walking and and running with the straight back, and it, it it's just it, it's a sign of them that they're becoming this this neat human being. But you know, there's another position that reveals more about, excuse me, our uniqueness. Standing up defines a physical gift, but kneeling provides or reveals a spiritual gift. Praying is unique. We spend almost a year to learning how to stand up and to take a few steps. But it can take us a lifetime to learn how to bow down, how to kneel, and to pray. Prayer, folks, is a lifelong process. And the sooner that we learn to be on our knees in prayer about everything, the sooner peace will remain in our lives. Now, we don't have to be always on our knees to pray, but we do need to humble ourselves. We need to have this quiet conversation with God. We need to listen for His voice, listen for His response. Folks, we need to take everything to God in prayer. From the smallest things in our lives to the biggest. There's nothing, nothing that's too small to share with God. And on the other end of the spectrum, there is nothing too big for prayer either. Anxious, nothing. Prayerful, everything. Thankful, anything. The verses mention something about being joyful and, and thankful. That doesn't mean that we always have to be happy. For me, happiness is this is a, an emotional state that that's dependent upon outside forces or outside things. 
joyful or being thankful is more of this, this spiritual thing. It's dependent on ours, our state of being, us, what's in here. I know that being thankful for everything or anything isn't an easy task. And at first, thankful for anything seems a little silly. You think about all the bad things that have happened to, to us and, and to others. And those who are included in being thankful for everything. It doesn't mean that we want bad things to happen. But we need to be mindful that even in the, the worst of times, there's something for us to be thankful for. When Paul was writing this this morning to uh, this verse from Philippians, he was actually under house arrest. He wasn't in a dungeon. And maybe for Paul, that's what he was thankful for because he was arrested, but he was under house arrest. It's important for us to see the good and the gifts that are in all this, this frustration and bad times. You know, over the past year, we've, we've had several deaths at both congregations. And death is one of those times that being joyful and thankful uh, can be a little tough. But as many as you, of you know, I lost to my dear friend, uh, Glenn Hester. And in thinking about this this morning, you know, I, I, I thought how Glenn and I there toward the end, we, we, we talked a lot. And, and you could tell that his, his, his health was declining. But I remember the last time we spoke. We had a great conversation. I could tell that he was tired, but, but we kept talking. We talked about the, the old days, the, the things we used to do. And then he wanted to talk about the now, the today. And he said, Jeff, you know what? He said, me and God are good. Me and God are good. And as we got ready to finish, I asked him if there was anything he needed or anything I could do for him. I told him I'd be praying for him. Was there something I could pray for him for? He said, Jeff, I want you to pray for healing. It wasn't but a day or two after I received a call that Glenn had passed. And at first, I, I cried. I was sad. And I mourned his loss. But after talking with a minister friend of mine, I, I, I changed my thinking. Because I was reminded there was something to be thankful for. Glenn's prayer, my prayer for Glenn, had been answered. Glenn had been healed. His earthly body and, and, and health was never going to be as good as it was. But now he was free. As our faith says, he has a new perfect body. A body that cannot be attacked by cancer. A body that will never again feel pain. I found peace. I found something to be thankful for. For the new life that Glenn had received. We can be thankful in anything we face. 
But if you have a hard time trying to figure out what it is, think of this. We can be thankful because we know God is with us. Because if God weren't there, things would be a whole lot worse. Remember the poem, Footprints in the Sand. When you look back and you see the two sets of prints, so you know God's there with you. And you, you hit those rough times and, and there's only one set. It left us. What does it say? So he was carrying us through. We put all these phrases together. The, the peace of God will help us remain connected. Try and remember these seven words. Say them day after day. Say them several times a day. You log into Facebook several times a day. Say that. Say those words seven times a day. Several times a day, I'm sorry. And if you say them several times a day, it's going to help you stay logged in. It's going to help you stay logged into God and God's Spirit. And whenever you feel that you're, you're starting to, to become disconnected or, or you feel like you're just running on low, 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 repeat those words. Do what they say. And you will be able to reconnect. Let's say it one more time together. Anxious, nothing. Prayerful, everything. Thankful, anything. Peace. Remember, my friends, our faith is greater than our fears. And it's in his name we pray. Folks, as you leave and go about your day today, remember those words. Remember when you face those hard times. Say those seven words. And if you have trouble finding something to be thankful for, remember, God has not left us. He is always, always Go with this blessing. Father, build a fire under and within us. Enable us to joyfully go into your world to serve your people. And in doing so, to serve you. Go in peace, dear friends. Amen. And have a great day.